Barack Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom to y'all. Um, we come today just to introduce the, uh, our master's offerings, Yahuwah's offerings, um, giving y'all a more detail, or he allowing him giving y'all a more detailed um, explanation on, on the offering of the third hour, the sixth hour, and the ninth hour offerings that we are all supposed to be doing on a continual basis, on a daily basis. So um, we're going to have Brother Masha come in and and, 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 and read precepts and, 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 and allow the master to, to speak through him about his set-apart offerings. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. All right, today we're going to um, learn today. We're going to allow the master to teach us uh, about his Kadush offerings, the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour offerings uh, that is ordained in his righteous Torah. Um, if, to anyone who may not know, if you know of the hour of the hours of offerings, then it's just a refresher. But to anyone who is who is seeking truth and just or either coming to the knowledge of the truth or just uh, just wanting to grow more in in, in their walk with Yahuwah, we just wanna. Uh, it is more to those, to anyone who who's, who wants to learn more and who wants to just grow closer in their walk with Yahuwah. So we're just going to go over just the hours of offerings um, and explain them and and how we can apply them to our lives, our daily our daily worship, our daily service to Yahuwah. This, all right. First, above all, we got to... We got to go to the foundation of all things. Our foundation being Torah, we got to... Uh, go and and then to the to the foundation. The Torah is our foundation, so let us go to the Torah to establish the matter. All right, we got uh, Numbers twenty eight verses one through eight. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, "Command the children of Yasharal, and you shall say to them, Take heed to bring my offering, my food for my offerings made by fire." As a sweet fragrance to me at their appointed time. And you shall say to them, This is the offering made by fire which you bring to Yahuwah, two lambs of your old, perfect ones, daily, a continual ascending offering. The one lamb you prepare in the morning, and the other lamb you prepare between the evenings, with one tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering mixed with one fourth of a hen of pressed oil. A continual ascending offering, which was offered on Mount Sinai for a sweet fragrance. An offering made by fire to Yahuwah, and his drink offering. One fourth of a hint of, for each lamb, pour out the drink to Yahuwah as an offering in a set apart place. And the other lamb you prepare between the evenings. As the morning grain offering and his drink offering, you prepare it as an offering made by fire as a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And the precept to this, in Jubilee, concerning this very same instruction, Jubilee 6.14, And for this Torah, there is no limit of days, for it is forever. They shall observe it throughout their generation, so that they may continue, continue supplicating on your behalf with blood before the altar, every day at the time of the morning and at the time of the evening, evening they shall seek forgiveness. On your behalf perpetually before Yahuwah, that they may guard it and may not be rooted out. Okay, so we see, we see um, that this Torah is an everlasting, is an everlasting Torah, an everlasting instruction that the children of Yahshua were to uh, uh, daily bring them his food, daily bring them the offerings. Now these offerings, all these offerings, were made on account of sin, on account of transgression, on the, on the on, on account of the the, 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 the the sins of the people, they, they, they served as a continual uh, as a continual uh, a covering of sin, as a continual covering of sin for the, the, the transgressions of the people. First, we must understand that since the time of Adam, animal offerings have been given on behalf of sin. When Adam transgressed against Yahuwah, when he disobeyed the command to not partake of the forbidden fruit lest he die, he disobeyed. Thus, sin and death entered into the world. Death was pronounced over all flesh, over all mankind. And they sinned, and what, okay, over all mankind. After they sinned, what did Yahuwah do? 
what did he do? He instituted the, he instituted the need for blood to be shed on behalf of sin. The wages of sin is death. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. This goes back to the garden. Yahuwah, because of his great compassion, did not destroy them, but rather slew two animals on behalf of Adam and Kua and covered their nakedness with the skins of those animals. In other words, he covered their crookedness. He covered their sins with 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 the with the with the the skins of these animals. He 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 covered their sins. He covered their nakedness. Yahuwah commanded these offerings to be made on behalf of Adam and on behalf of his descendants. Yahuwah has the right to consume us because of the sin of Adam. The judgment of death was pronounced pronounced over all mankind, and so he commanded Adam and all his descendants to bring animal offerings on behalf of their sins so that Yahuwah would not consume or destroy them. The blood of these animals did not take away our sin, nor remove it from our conscience, nor did it ever perfect those offering at the altar, nor could it redeem those from the curses of death. Over the, he, it could, the blood of these animals could never redeem us from the curses of death that was uh, pronounced over our flesh through the sin of Adam and Kua. Um, the, those animals only served as a temporary covering to satisfy the Torah for the wages of sin is death. It served as a temporary covering for sin, as a temporary covering. It did not take away our sins, but it simply served as a way to cover our sins for a season. The morning, uh, the morning and evening offering was a continual offering daily. One lamb in the morning, one lamb in the evening. Ultimately, we all know all the offerings were a foreshadowing of the continual offering, the everlasting offering of Yahushua HaMashiach. And within the Torah of animal offering was the master's redemption plan for his son Adam. In the, in the, in the renewed covenant, we see that the master came and offered himself at these appointed times at the time of the morning and the evening offering. He came in fulfillment of what was, of what was, of what was written about him in the Torah, in the prophets, and in the writings. He came to fulfill Torah in every way. All the offerings pointed to him, to, the, to our redemption, to the true salvation that would come. All right, so we're going to go into the renewed covenant to confirm this matter that he indeed came to fulfill these very these very appointed times of offering that was written and ordained in the Torah. All right, we're going to go to Mark 15, 24 through 25. And when they impaled him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them, what each what each one should take. And it was the third hour and they impaled him. All right. In accordance with a 12 hour scriptural day, they brought him to the stake to be impaled at the third hour of the day in the morning. This was the time of the daily offering. That was the more it, it was the time of the daily morning offering. The third hour was the, 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 the morning, the, 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 the time of the morning offering. This was him fulfilling the third hour. All right. And from the sick. All right. Now we're going to continue to the sixth and the ninth hour offering. The, the, the sixth and the ninth hour, okay? In Matthew 27, chapter 27, verses 45 through 50. And from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lemma shabachtani, that is my El, my El, why have you forsaken me? Some of those standing there, having heard, said, This one calls Al Yahu. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Leave it. Let us see if Al Yahu comes to save him. And Yahushua cried out again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Okay? We see from the sixth to the ninth out to the ninth hour, uh, 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 darkness came over. All the land from the sixth to the ninth hour. Okay? At noon, at the sixth hour of the day, darkness fell upon the whole earth. This was very significant. This represents the darkness that he came to deliver us from. Him hanging upon the stake at the sixth hour while the whole earth went dark was a fulfillment of that night in Egypt when the lamb was slain and the blood of the lamb was applied to the doorpost to deliver them from the destroyer. 
It was at midnight, which is the sixth hour of the night, when the death messenger passed throughout the land of Egypt to kill all the firstborn. And so we see that Yahusha came as the Passover the land, as the Passover lamb to 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 for the he came as the, the, the Passover lamb for the entire earth to redeem all from darkness. From the at the sixth hour, as it, at the sixth hour of the day, it went dark. This goes back to Egypt when he, when that lamb was slain at midnight. At midnight, at the sixth hour of the night, he came in fulfillment of that to fulfill what was written about him. Um, he had to die on Pesach during the daytime so as to fulfill the morning and evening offering, but at the same time suffering at the sixth hour of the day when darkness came upon all the earth so as to fulfill what was written about him in the Torah, that during the first Pesach in Egypt at the sixth hour of the night at midnight, in the darkness, the children of Yahshua were delivered by the blood of the Lamb from, from the death messenger. He came to fulfill all righteousness. He came as our Pesach Lamb to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness to bring us back into his marvelous light. And we see as we read in Matthew that at, not at the ninth hour of the day, in the evening, he gave up his spirit so as to fulfill the evening offering, ultimately fulfilling the work the Father had sent him to do. He gave up his life as a whole burnt offering on behalf of our crookedness so as to deliver him from death. So again, the third hour was when they took him to the stake to be impaled. The sixth hour was uh, the hour in which he came. The whole earth went dark until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour is when he gave up his root. So these are the, the hours of offerings ultimately basically that we draw near to him daily at these hours, the same hours that he came and suffered for us. As the blood of all those animals in accordance with the Torah, in accordance with the Torah, could not take away sin, they were all a foreshadowing of the one who would come to take away the sins of the world. Yahuwah in flesh came as Yahusha to take upon the penalty of death that was pronounced over all mankind through the sin of Adam and Kua, and pay the ultimate price through his shed blood, through his shed blood, and thus, all who believe in his shed blood will have the penalty of death paid in them through belief in him. All right. So we, Yahushua came to fulfill all righteousness. He came to fulfill everything that was written about him in the, in the Torah. Okay. We all know and understand that the animal offerings were a foreshadowing of Yahushua. But one thing we must understand is that the animal offerings were a representation of us. He came as us where we deserve to die he took our place because when we are immersed in his name, we are being, we are being immersed into his death. All right. When we're partaking of his death and we're immersed in his name, we are partaking of his death, burial and his resurrection. Okay. Um, now I pray, now I pray that you understand that we, I pray we understand that we no longer bring him the blood of bulls, goats and sheep. As it, as it was never his desire for him to bring animals in his first in the first place it was because it was written it's written in uh Psalms 4 and 6 sacrifices offerings you did not desire but my ears you have opened burnt offering and sin offerings you did not desire okay but the Torah still calls for an offering now what is the offering that he desires what is the offering that he has always that, that he ultimately desires okay um it is written the slaughterings of Elohim are a broken spirit a heart broken and crushed O Elohim these you do not despise that is Psalms 51 and 17 the offering he desires is a heart that is broken and crushed a heart that is remorseful of the wrong it has committed he desires a heart that will humble itself and repent and turn from all sin in other words he desires one who will, be, who will become a living offering with him as his offering was, as he came as a living sacrifice, he wants those to become living sacrifices with him. For it is written, for it is written, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. And it is written, I call upon you therefore, brothers, um, through the compassion of Elohim, to present your bodies a living offering Set apart, well-pleasing to Allahim, your reasonable worship. 
and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you prove what is the good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. That is Romans 12, 1 through 2. Okay. From the very beginning, he has always desired our obedience, as it was disobedience that separated us from him. How can we continue in sin, understanding that he came to deliver us from sin? It doesn't make sense. He desires the offering of obedience and righteousness unto him as we walk in repentance before him. This is what he desires above all things, as it is written. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. For I fear Allah and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. This is the whole service of men. In other words, we, we, just, we must just become servants and humble ourselves before him and become living offerings in reverence and obedience unto him. Why must we have this understanding? Because of the, we are living in exciting times as we draw closer and closer to our redemption. The price has been paid and we are now free. We are no longer slaves, but we have been redeemed. He has given us a new heart that is willing to obey him. He has restored us to favor and we are now in right standing before him. As before, we were enemies of Elohim, but now we stand in peace. He has not dealt with us according to our iniquities, but he has dealt with us according to his everlasting loving commitment. Through his mercy, demonstrating, demonstrated to us as he came to the earth in the flesh and took our sins upon himself and died for us so that we would live. What can we possibly give him in return for all that is he had? For all that he has done for us. What what can we give him? What can we give him? You know, ultimately he desires our obedience above all things because our lives must first be a continual offering. But besides but besides our obedience, what what does he desire too, the loved one? What does he desire? Besides our obedience. Offerings. Offerings. Praises. Praises. Praises to Praise. his name. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Praises to his name. In Rook and Truth. In Rook and in Truth. In Rook and in Truth. He desires the praises of our lips, our thanksgiving for all that he's that he has done for us. Because he he came to shed his blood on behalf of our crookedness, to restore us, to set us apart back onto him. So in return. Not simply just we, we give them ultimately our obedience because ultimately our lives must be a continual sacrifice unto him. But within our walk, within our walks, within our obedience, within our continual uh, 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 walk with him, he desires the bulls of our lips. He desires to us, for us to just give him thanks in appreciation, in appreciation and gratitude for the things he has done for us, for calling us out of darkness and bringing us into his marvelous light he desires to, to he desires for us to just give him continual the continual offerings of praise the continual offerings of the bulls of our lips to just give thanks to his name for everything that he has done for us as in shamaim the messengers do not cease praising him as it is in heaven let it be so here on earth so just to lay a foundation that he desires our praise. He desires for us to come at these hours. The third, sixth, ninth hour offering. The same hours that he came to suffer for us, to redeem us from death. We draw near to him now as renewed creatures, as, a, as renewed beings, as renewed men and women. With the hearts of thanksgiving, we draw near to him at these hours on a daily basis. As it is written in his Torah, this is a daily offering, a continual offering forever unto all generations. We draw near to him at these hours in appreciation and gratitude for the life that he's given us. We give him thanks for the life that is in Mashiach. We give him life for, for what he's done. We give him thanks for the for the for the thing for all that he has done for us, basically. Okay? So to just to lay just precept upon precept that he desires our praise. Psalms 34. Verse 1, I bless Yahuwah at all times. His praise is continually on my mouth. His praise is continually all the time on our mouth, on our lips. We are pray, we praise Him daily. Okay? Hosea 14, 1 through 2. O Yashara, return to Yahuwah your Elohim, for you have stumbled by your crookedness. 
Take heed, take words with you and return to Yahuwah. Say to him, take away our crookedness and what is good. And we render the bulls of our lips. All right. Daniel 6 and 10. Daniel chapter 6, verses 10. And Daniel, when he knew that the writings were signed, went home in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his Allah as he had done before. So even Daniel shows us that even in captivity, even without a temple, even without animal offerings, we are still to obey Torah. He still obeyed Torah even in captivity. He came even, even in the midst of, in the, of the nations, he was still obeying the Torah, bringing the offerings. Third, sixth, and the ninth hour, he continued in Torah with or without the temple. Now we stand here with no temple, no animal offerings, because we know Yahusha came to fulfill that. But Daniel was set forth as an example for, for, for future generations that even in captivity, we are to still obey Torah, to, to still obey the instructions in spirit and in truth. Psalms 50, 12 through 14. If I were hungry, I would not speak to you, for the world is mine and all that fills it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of, go blood of goats? Slaughter thanksgiving to Allahim. Slaughter thanksgiving to him. Sacrifice thanksgiving to Allahim. And pay your vows to Yahuwah. Psalm 55, 16 through 17. I call upon Elohim, and Yahuwah saves me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I complain and moan, and he hears my voice. Evening, morning, and at noon, the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour of the day. We are to cry out to him. We are to make petitions. We are to continually cry out to him on a daily basis for deliverance. Psalm 69, 30 through 31. I praise the name of Allahim with a song, and I make him great with thanksgiving. And this pleases more, Yahuwah more than an ox, a bull with horns and hooves. The pray, he, 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 he desires the, the praises and, 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 the, and us worshiping him has always pleased him more than, 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 for us to bring him a, than for us to bring him a bull and a goat and a sheep. He never desired that. All he ever desired was our praise, our thanksgiving, our, our gratitude to him and just esteeming his name. Psalms 107, 21 through 22. Let them give thanks to Yahuwah for his loving commitment and his wonders to the children of men and let them slaughter, slaughterings of thanksgiving and relate his works with rejoicing. But I slaughter, oh, and let them slaughter slaughterings of thanksgiving and relate his works with rejoicing. Again, just slaughterings of praise. Jonah chapter two, verses nine through 10. But I slaughter to you who, I slaughter to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I have paid what I have vowed. Deliverance is of Yahuwah. Then Yahuwah spoke to the fish and vomited Yuna out of the dry land. Deliverance is in praise. He, uh, Jonah praised him in the midst of, in the belly of the beast and gave thanks to him and that brought forth deliverance. Psalms 119, verses, verses one, verse 108. Please accept the voluntary offering of my mouth, O Yahuwah, and teach me your right rulings. Psalms 141, one through two. Yahuwah, I have cried out to you. Hasten to me, give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be prepared before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening offering. Jeremiah 33 verses 11. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who are saying, praise Yahuwah of hosts for Yahuwah is good for his loving commitment is forever of those who are bringing the offering of praise into the house of Yahuwah. For I shall turn back the captivity of the land as is at first, declares Yahuwah. All right, Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. 
And do not be drunk with wine, in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the root, be filled with the spirit, speaking to each other in psalms, in songs of praise and spiritual songs, striking and stri singing and striking the strings in your heart to, to the master, giving thanks always for all to Allahim, the father, in the name of Yahusha, our master, subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of Allahim, continually bringing them the song, the spiritual song, the spiritual offerings, worshiping him in spirit and truth, Colossians 3.16, let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing with pleasure in your hearts to the master in psalms and in songs of praise and spiritual songs. And to end it, we got Hebrews 13.15-16. Through him, through him then, let us continually offer up a slaughter offering of praise to Elohim, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, and do not forget to do good, for with such slaughter offerings, Elohim is well pleased. So ultimately in us, learning to do of we, us daily is not simply just at these hours too. In our lives daily, out in these hours and outside of these hours are to be a continual slaughter offering, a continual offering of, of, of reverence and obedience. Because when we walk in when we walk in that which pleases him, our praises, our prayers will send up to him as a sweet smelling aroma as we walk steadfastly before him in uprightness before him and all men. So um again, the third hour, sixth hour, and the ninth hour are the hours that we draw near to him daily in prayer and in worship. And, and, and give him thanks and just bring him the bulls of our lips, giving thanks to him continually for all that he has done for us, for, uh, for, for all that he has done for each and every single one of us. And, 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 and this ties along with even all the feast days. All the feast days are just uh, about celebrating and praising and giving, him, and giving thanks for our redemption for, because our redemption truly draws nigh. So, um, that's pretty much it, uh, explaining the, the hours of offerings. And uh, I pray it was a bare call to anyone who, 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 who may have not known. If you, if you know the hours of offering, Barak Yahuwah, but to those who may not know, I pray that it brought some type of uh, more understanding, that the master gave you more understanding today uh, on these hours and, 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 and that you can somehow uh, include them into your to your to your daily walk with you because it is indeed mandatory this is mandatory it is ordained in this torah it is forever established in the shamani that we all draw near to him and become these offerings and and, and give him praise and worship him as one mind one body and what as one offering unto him so rock you all right <coughs> There's no one greater could have came and saved our lives than Yahuwah and Yahusha.
got the understanding that, I, that, that, that it brought understanding that even a child can understand as, as, as I once our beloved elder used to say rock your wood and um, with this being said we're going to do we pray that we show y'all a tangible example of what offerings look like uh, in spirit and in truth and so y'all can get an understanding of what it look like um, in, in, in spirit and in truth rock your wood <laughs> 